Hello, hello and welcome back to the channel. It is highly time for a new tutorial since I haven't made um, one in quite some time. And uh, this time I also decided to go for something creative again. So um, it was actually something that was requested under one of my videos. And uh, if you go to my intro video on the channel, you see there is a protein that grows flowers. And uh, this is uh, something that I would like to show you how I did that actually. Um, there are two techniques on how to do that. And I would like to start with the first one, which is the more uh, yeah, older version and also the version how I did it. It is done with an emitter system, with a hair system actually. The second way you can do that is by using geometry nodes. And this is uh, going to be a separate video on how to do that. It gives you more control over the look. But first we are going to start with this one and the geometry nodes version is going to be uh, in a separate video. So you can also compare the two, um, the two techniques with each other. To be honest, um, the classical version, so using an emitter system is the easier one because you don't have to think about geometry nodes that much. But if you're into geometry nodes, then of course, uh, skip ahead to the next video and go for that route if you would like to prefer that. So without further ado, I would say let's just dive into it. I'm going to show you how I made the animation that you also saw in the intro of that video. And we are going to start out, out with just uh, the basic scene. So what you see on my screen here is just a protein structure. In that case, it's the structure of a strictosidine synthase, which is just like placed in the middle of my scene, as you can see here. Lighting wise, I have a sunlight above uh, the protein and there is also one point light in the middle of my of the protein here. You're going to see or you saw already actually that it should like illuminate the center of the protein. Um, the shading of the protein itself is very simple. Um, so as you can see, uh, it's a very light, bright structure. And if I go into the material depth, you see it's a subsurface scattering shader. With all the, uh, the settings left as they are by default, because I think that actually fits quite nicely. I, uh, for my scene, I decided to have the lights with a subtle color. In that case, I went for pink because also the petals of the flowers that I used are pink. The same is true for the light in the center and also the sun at the top. If you're interested about the settings, you can also see them on that side if you would like to copy them. Apart from the structure, we also need, of course, our flowers. And I did not create those flowers myself. I went over to Turbo Squid, but you can use whatever source you would like to have for any kind of 3D objects. And I went for one of the models um, that shows uh, oleander because I really like that kind of flower or bush or whatever you would like to call it. So I went for that one. Uh, you see, the model that I got from Duvoskut is one that is free. So if you would like to have the exact type of flower, you can head over there and also download it. Uh, something that you also see, I did not use the full uh, bush that you see here. I just used the flower, um, yeah, the, the, the one single flower. You could use like larger portions there as well. So if you would like to incorporate some of the leaves as well, um, you can do that as well. So what I prepared for us now is on the side, quite tiny. There is uh, just a couple of branches with leaves and also just one single flower that we have here. And uh, that's, uh, that's going to be the objects that we are going to use. So, um, well, you can decide if you would like to have some leaves or not, or just the flower. Uh, and we are going to use them uh, on our protein. The way we do that is just select the protein and I'm going to go into the solid mode so that you see easier what I uh, select here on screen. Oops. So select the protein and then activate the particle properties tab and just hit plus here. You know that kind of settings, if you watched any of my previous videos before, you know that kind of um, tab or what emitter systems do. I very often use them to create those kind of dust particles that you see floating around. For emitting the flowers, we are going to actually use a hair system. 
if you uh, click on hair instead of emitter, you suddenly see like streaks coming out of your protein. And we are going to substitute those streaks with just one of our objects. And you do that by just scrolling down and in the render section, you see that there is an option to select an object instead of a path. So just click on object. And as we do for normally the emitter systems, you can now just use the eyedropper or the drop down menu to select the object that you would like to have. And I'm going to just select uh, the one bevel that we have here. And you see tiny objects appearing. They are very tiny, as you can see here. Okay, let me interrupt you here. While editing, I realized that I forgot to mention something very important about uh, the flowers that we have here. Um, it is really important that you uh, make a couple of modifications here in order for the flowers to display uh, nicely on your object. And that is that the anchor point of your object is basically somewhere at the bottom of um, our flower here. The reason for that is really simple. If you have uh, the origin at the geometrical center of your object, this is going to be the point where the emission basically happens. That would mean that half of your flower would be like inside of your, um, of your protein in that case. So what we need to do is we need to put uh, the origin somewhere at the bottom. So this is true for if you are going for the flower only, but also if you have a couple of branches. So make sure that you put the origin somewhere at the bottom. I'm quickly going to show you how to do that with the flower. So you just select your object, then you go into the edit mode by hitting tab. I'm also going to go into the solid mode. Then you make sure that you have the uh, selection mode set to vertex. And then you, you just select one vertex at the bottom. It doesn't matter which it is. It just need to be one that is at the very bottom of your object. After that, you hit shift S and set cursor to select it. Then the cursor jumps here. Then you leave the edit mode by hitting tab again. And then you go to object, set origin and then origin to 3D cursor. And then the origin is set exactly to the selected vertice that we had before. You can do the same thing with the branches. So as you can see, I already did that. Um, select one of the vertices at the bottom and then uh, you are good to go. Great, with that, let's continue the tutorial. I already prepared uh, the emitter system and I'm going to show you the settings as they are in the final rendering because setting up a particle system like this or an emitter system like this, or in that case a hair system actually, uh, for me at least takes a lot of trial and error. So I'm not going to have you sit through that phase and I'm going to give you the final settings right away. So I saved that uh, settings under, I have a particular one which is called flowers here. And that is uh, the final scene that you've saw, that you've seen in the video before. And I'm going to walk you through the settings. So for my protein and the size of my protein, I decided to have uh, 1,500 of the um, pebbles there or of the flowers there. And I kept the hair length as it was for four meters because I uh, decided to have them grow with a different uh, input window. The flowers are emitted from the faces and also uh, I kept, I think it, those are the standard settings to be honest. So I kept the distribution with chitted, random order and even distribution. One thing I activated was the rotation because that uh, allows me to introduce some sort of randomness. Um, here I tweaked the face a bit. Um, so if I move that uh, cursor here, so probably I'm, let me go back. I'm just going to go into the solid view, to view so that you see better what's happening here. So uh, if you change the face, also the orientation of the flowers basically changes. You also see that uh, for me, there are already keyframes inserted, but that's also something I'm going to guide you uh, through afterwards. So first let's continue with setting up the system. So in orientation, 
play with the face a bit. For me, as I said, um, uh, in, in my setting and for my protein, um, minus 0 0.5 as uh, an end point was fine. And uh, as a start point, I used a face of zero. Then uh, I also randomized the face a bit, so I uh, chose to go for 1.2. Then um, for the physics, I did not change anything. I kept it as it was. Then the render settings, uh, the scale, in my case is 2.5. And I also set uh, the maximum value for the randomness of the scale so that you have larger flowers and smaller flowers just randomly assigned to your object. Then uh, all the other settings I kept as they are, so I can actually close those tabs. And that is basically it. So, uh, of course, as you saw, uh, our flowers are growing out of the protein and this is done by just uh, keyframing their, their, their size. So if I uh, jump to, to frame number one, so as you can see, I'm at the end of my animation, you see the bare protein there. And this is keyframed by just uh, uh, using the scale. So what you do is you just, so I'm just going to clear the keyframes to show you the process uh, quickly. So what you do, is you just enter the lowest number uh, that you can get for the scale. In this case, it's not zero, but it's a very, it's like 0 0.001, so really small. Then you hover above the field and you just hit I. Then the field turns uh, yellow. And then you go to uh, the next frame where you would like to have your, uh, the end point of that animation. In my case, I chose to have it at 150 and then you enter, in my case, 2.5 and press I again. And when it's yellow, you see that basically uh, the keyframe was taken. So what we have now is a steady growth of our flowers until uh, frame 150. And then after that frame, the flowers are only moving a bit. And that movement is done with the face settings that you see here on the right. So if I go to the first keyframe, you see that the face is set to zero. And if I go to the last keyframe, you see that the face is at minus, point, uh, minus 0 0.5. And that is really it. The reason why I decided to stop the growing before the end of the video is because I wanted to have like the, the full sized pebbles shown. And this is how, you, how that complete system is set up. Of course, um, the, the flowers are assigned randomly. So they are not really representing like the side chains of the protein or anything scientific. But uh, I think it's a really nice look, to be honest. You can easily, if you have the, the, the system set up once, you can easily change um, the things that are emitted, so the hair, so to say, in that case. So as you saw, I also prepared the branch with a couple of leaves. So if you just would like to substitute that, you go into the uh, render uh, tab and then just uh, the instance object, um, T-select the flower that you had and then just reselect um, the other object can be anything. In my case, it's the one, uh, the branch with the leaves. Of course, the settings are kept the same in that case, which uh, is of a problem in my case because of the size. So you see that the, that the branch is of course way larger than, than um, the single flower, but we can of course uh, adjust that. So in my case, I would go to frame 150 because that's the end point of the size. And then I just decrease the size to something uh, that I think is more fitting and uh, yeah, go with that. So this, of course, again, uh, needs a bit of tweaking um, because you might also want to change the amount of branches that are emitted because now, of course, it's a bit more tense if you have more objects that are emitted or a, a more complicated object that is emitted. So you might want to adjust that, of course. I'm going to go back to my Bebbles. If I don't keyframe that here, uh, that change is going to be lost, which is fine with me. So if I go back again and select my single flower, then I'm back with the original animation that you saw so far. Okay, so I'm going to give that uh, a final render. Oh, there is one thing I forgot, of course, the dust that I uh, promised to show you as well. 
So uh, the setup for that is, as you've seen in many of my videos, so I'm going to go over it rather quickly. So I made an emitter system, which is called Dust. And this is um, just a simple icosphere that emits um, another icosphere from, I think it's the volume that I chose. Yeah, from the volume and um, everything else is kept the same. Uh, the other atmosphere is hidden. It's actually here as well, but I just hide those kind of objects because they are a bit disturbing to me. Um, and if I play the animation, you see that those kind of uh, bubbles just appear. And the material of that icosphere is a standard glass material with no changes at all. There is also something that I added. Also, if you know any of my uh, previous videos, you know that I'm a huge fan of Tap of Field. So I set up uh, the Tap of Field uh, for the camera with my protein in the focus. So that's the BDB code of the pro protein, obviously and the f-stop in my case to 0.1. This is also something you need to try. Uh, the f-stop depends on the distance between your object and your camera, of course. So you might want to tweak that as well. But in my case, so if I go into uh, the rendered and also the final scene, you see there is a bit of blurriness for the objects in the, in the front, which gives the kind of image it's depth, of course. And also like the bubbles that are emitted, um, yeah. They uh, blur in the front and in the back. Okay, so then for the render settings, since this is a really uh, simple scene, you can render with a rather low number of samples. In my case, I just went for 32. Uh, I used the denoiser for that. Um, I, I, I would say, but give it a try, you could maybe go even uh, lower with that because we, have, we don't have like overcomplicated materials here. So I would say, give it a try render it and have fun with the final video and the final animation and i hope that was useful and i'm going to see you then in the next tutorial basically making the same but just with a different technique that gives you more control over where your flowers uh, should grow on your protein for example i hope you enjoyed that and i'm going to see you in the next one mm -hmm.